Hey guys, Adam here, and welcome to another On The Couch Rewind. We continue our Marvel Madness with the third Netflix Marvel series, Luke Cage. And honestly, it's my favorite. I'm not kidding. Yeah, Luke Cage has his issues and has probably, while not the worst issues, definitely you can see that dip. But it is my favorite for one particular reason. It's, for me at least, the best black exploitation superhero movie, uh, movie or series I've ever seen. Like it's it's that good. And and throwing some politics in here, it is a show that really honestly was needed. Like with with the with a lot of the turmoil that's been going on in the last three years. With um, with young black men being shot, poli uh, police uh, ten uh, tension between black communities and uh, ro police relations, and a lot of and a lot of people feeling like they can't they can't really they don't really have someone they can look up to. Luke Cage is definitely that person is that hero and I and I I mean well I'm not the foremost authority on Luke Cage I do like Luke Cage I, I I've always found him a very cool hero uh, the fact the fact that he's bulletproof but he's not like Superman or anything he's just a guy I mean he's just a regular dude is what he is he's a he's a regular everyday dude who's just kind of wanting to get by and I'm gonna take this hoodie off because one it stinks I haven't washed it and it kind of burning up in here and that's pretty much that's really kind of pretty much it say for like his personal story and how that connects with the whole with that whole thing and honest and honestly it works uh it's not the most well paced but it's actually better paced than uh jessica jones or uh or uh daredevil season two uh let's go into characters like i said about my culture and jessica jones He's really good as Luke Cage. He is fan fucking tastic as Luke Cage. He, honestly, he feels like Luke Cage in this than he did in Jessica Jones. Uh, not to mention, he is one smooth motherfucker. Like this guy is smooth. Like I mean, he he gets uh, he gets uh, a suit and he uh, he gets a suit for Pop's funeral and uh, he looks great and yet he walks around get, get shot multiple times while wearing this suit and <laughs> see and and yet he's just like man I, I just have this tailored this is this is personally tailored to me come on it's great um he's really good and like a lot of people think he's a little deadpan but i think that works for him i think that's where his charm is is he is deadpan. He's meant to be very stoic. He's not meant to show a lot of emotion because he's meant to be that classic 70s smooth talking ma uh, macho guy. That's what he's supposed to be. Especially, like, I grew up, I, I mean, I watched Shaft. I've seen black exploitation movies similar to this. That's kind of the thing, and it works for this guy. And um, that's what I love about this. It is a black exploitation film. Uh, a series. Quentin Tarantino wanted to do a Luke Cage movie set in the 70s, and it would have worked. I like, and yet somehow Luke Cage works here. If it was done, say, early 2000s, it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked as well. If now, if it was set in like say 92, it might have worked if you took, but only if you took Luke Cage out of Harlem and put him in L.A. with the with the Rodney King uh, being riots and whatnot, L.A. riots, that probably would have worked. But really, Luke Cage, other than the 70s, really does work now. It, he works well here. And he's a very relatable... And, I mean, okay, I can't relate to him as much, but I know I got friends who do. I got, I got friends who can relate to Luke Cage. And he's not the stereotypical, I'm a big, strong black guy. He does have character to him. He does have, 
and he and it's and he does have a good arc. It's what it's and I'm sorry, I'm going off of memory here, so it's been months since I last watched it, but he He's a he is a relatable he is a somewhat relatable dude because he's just a dude. He's just a regular dude who can't get hurt. And and it works here. It's, and like I said, it works for this time period because we have a lot of people who wish they can be bulletproof. And I and and but it doesn't get preachy about it. It doesn't get Preachy, I, and I like that. Next, you got Missy Knight, who is a good, who is the, who is a cop, who's trying to take down Cottonmouth, but also kind of like keeping an eye on Luke Cage because he's doing things outside the law. And there is tension there, and I really like their chemistry. Uh, I mean, hell, first time to meet, first episode, they bang, and we see it. It was kind of awesome. It was like, it wasn't like in Jessica Jones where it's just like, just like, uh, uh, uh. it's more like that smooth love making, Barry White playing in the background. Like, I'm talking, like I said, fucking Shaft. That's who he is. He is bulletproof Shaft. I'm not fucking, like, if, if they remade Shaft, I would be 100% okay with Mike Coulter as Shaft. I would be. I can see him as Shaft, like a really big Shaft. Shaft, I mean, Shaft, Shaft's an imposing dude, but he was never like, what, what six foot five, I think, I think Mike Coulter is or something. He ain't that, he's not that big. At least I don't think Richard Roundtree was that big. But anyway, uh, Miss, but Missy Knight, is a pretty reasonable, is a pretty good character, at least until the later half. But I feel like that was the writing of, oh, well, we gotta make Luke Cage as sympathetic as possible while, I mean, uh, like, we gotta get behind, we gotta get people to get behind his cause, so we gotta make the cops look a little bad. And for the most part, it works. Uh, there are good moment. There are good scenes where a kid gets the shit beaten out of him because Luke Cage has been framed, and a cop beats the fuck out of him. Just beats the unholy shit out of him because the kid doesn't know where Luke Cage is, and and it, all because Luke Cage has been framed by uh, by Diamondback for the murder of a cop. Which, okay, dumb plan. <laughs> I mean, I'll get to Diamond back in a bit, but what I like about it is the cop that beat him wasn't white. He was black because that actually, I because I, I feel like the showrunner got understood. It's not, it's not white cops versus black guys. It's cops versus, it's really just bad cops or, in comp, or cops taking it too far is what it is. And, and I think the show, and I, and it's, I'm, this is my personal belief, is that the, the showrunner got that, and I'm sorry I can't remember his name, but the showrunner understood that, understood that not all, co not all bad cops are white, not all, uh, and not all bad cops are, are white, or not all cops who abuse their power or overstep their boundaries are gonna be just a bunch of white dudes. And that works here. It, it, it does show that the relations in Harlem are tense between the Har the community, the Harlem, the black community in Harlem, and cops. Now, but I'm sorry, I've been I don't know why I've been skipping over Misty Knight. I guess I guess I don't have as much to talk about her. But like, but she isn't that bad, and she is actually competent. She's smart. She does. I mean, they do kind of write start writing her like she is doing stupid things but there is an arc where it's like it is kind of revealed that she just doesn't like things out of her control and that's understandable i can i can kind of get behind that um but uh but she kind of has to not then accept that things that with a war in a world of gods and monsters and super soldiers and now a bulletproof black guy you like she's gonna have to learn to accept that 
Now, she does deal with the stupid, idiotic uh, police captain. She goes through two police captains. I'm not making that up. Goes through two police ca captains. One of them is comp. One of them is like, okay, yeah, but keep it within. Find me proof, and I'll get and I'll let you go out there. Which understandable. Here it's, oh no, we gotta do this by the rules, and it's like, and like, there's a difference between working within the confines of the law and just having your goddamn balls like in a clinch, like just like held tight to the point where you can't fucking breathe, and that's that police captain to the point where she's almost insufferable and like you keep thinking it's like, oh she's gonna be corrupt no she's just no she's just one of those stick to the rule cops uh police captains and and okay growing up as a kid growing up in the 90s and growing up with like action movies from the 80s and 90s and the trope is the police the asshole police captain yeah i get it but there's a difference between done well and not done well and it's not done well here um uh codmouth uh I'm, I'm gonna butcher his name marishala ali holy fuck man holy fuck is he good in this like he is damn good in this to the point where when he gets killed off you are kind of mad because you're like motherfucker you just killed off your best villain He's honestly, he's definitely up there with, uh, with Kingpin and uh, Kilgrave. He is that good. Like he does have a backstory. He does. You do feel for why he's doing what he did. You feel bad for him. For like you do feel a little sympathetic because he had aspirations to do other things, to be more than just a criminal, and yet he. But because he was abused. Because he, uh, but because he was abused by his grandmother, because he uh, grew up in a neighborhood where he lived in a crim, he lived under the household of a criminal empire of Harlem. He felt like he had a sense of duty to be a criminal. That he, what he wanted was power. And but when he also had like musical talent that he could have used, he could have been something more. And it's in the way he, and it, like when he gets killed off, it's just. It's shocking. You don't see it coming. You think he's going to be the main villain through and through, but he's not. But you also see, like, he's one of those villains whose power is getting out of control because he's now having to deal with a guy who can't get hurt. And I like, and I, I like that. I like villain. I do like villains like that, where they can be cartoony, but they can be, but you can almost relate to them. Like, I mean, like I said, I like straight up bad guys. I do. I, I, I have a soft spot for them. But then, but it wouldn't have worked in this, and it works. It would not have worked in this show. So I'm glad they had a character like that. Alfred Woodard as Mama, as Mabel, uh, Cottonmouth's cousin, also really good. Now, there are those who are wondering, it's like, like who are who would be confused like well i thought that, well why are there like two people there's alfrey woodard and civil war and alfrey woodard and uh luke cage here's the thing they didn't know she was she was cast the showrunners of luke cage didn't know she was in civil war which that's an issue all in and of itself which i'm not going to get into but alfrey woodard is fucking great in this alfrey woodard is fan is just awesome she's terrifying but she, and like she is one of, again like cottonmouth she's one of those that really embraces the fact that she's a criminal but she's a little different she wanted to not be a criminal but she still works with them because she knows that's where she can get the money that's where she has to get the money to do what she wants to do so it's kind of a compromise you kind of understand that but then she, but when her life is being tear, torn down by Luke Cage, she has to now accept the fact, oh, well, I came from a criminal empire, might as well work for the criminals. So yeah, there's her. 
Then you got Shades, and I wish I could remember his name. I like Shades though, because it's just like this. Sup, motherfucker. Like, he's got, he's got shit. He's always wearing sunglasses most of the time. He's like this. He's very smug. It's clear that when he wants, he's like the, he's like the, the little finger of this show. He's, he's always got a plan. He's always one step ahead. Uh, he's ready. He knows what's going to happen. And he's, and he's going to take down, and he, he has a plan. And it's always going to be take down Cottonmouth. Uh, so, I mean, that, and he's, he's really good. I, I really do like him in this. Oh, Claire Temple. Uh, one thing about the about these series is Claire uh, Claire's always going to be there. She is the she is night nurse, so she's going to meet all these heroes and she's going to help them out. She, she like she gets the arc of I want to do more. I want to help people out. I want to help these heroes. I, they're going to come to they're going to be hurt. They're going to come to me and they're going to need my help. And for the most part, she does have a good arc. Unfortunately, she overstays her welcome in this to the point where she becomes Luke's love interest, which doesn't, end, which then just ends with the running gag of this whole uh, girl asks Luke if he wants coffee, and he says, "I don't like coffee," and then she says, "Neither do I." And of course. For the most part, it does lead to a really cheesy line of, I hear Cuban is particularly robust, and I kind of lost my shit at that, because I'm like, that's a seven, that's a black exploitation line. That's a line that would get a girl's panties wet. Uh, Claire is very, it, it, she just kind of overstays her welcome. She is meant to just be there to to help with the exposition of Luke's backstory, and that's about it. And really, we didn't need that, uh, at least for the most part. I honestly, I didn't really want her to be his love interest. I really wanted Misty to be the love interest because I, I, their chemistry was a lot better. Their story was a lot better. It's just they did. It, I just, I kind of felt like Claire was forced. It was a lot more forced. I mean, and, and people complain about her in Iron Fist, honestly, and not nearly as bad as this. Diamondback. All right, so I said that earlier in this video, cartoony villains would not have worked. I, what I should have said was, cartoony villains would work in this show, except for this guy. Why? Because I am a sucker for anyone who quotes the Warriors. And he does it, um, like, right off the bat. And I just lost it. I loved it. I wanted it. I fucking love it when someone quotes the Warriors. Like, you, you, you suckered me into it. So when... <laughs> so when Diamondback quotes the Warriors, I'm just like... Greatest villain of all time! Greatest villain of all time! No dispute about it! So, yeah, Diamondback. But really, for the most part, he is a one-note, one, he is a one-note cartoony villain, and he's supposed to be Luke Cage's brother. And you don't really get a lot of that, because he only got, like, four episodes, like, three episodes left. But his intro episode is really good, because he, because it's a, it, Honestly, it's probably my second favorite episode because it's a nice cat and mouse episode where he's being fucking chased, or uh, where Luke is being chased and he's hurt. He is fucking hurt. They, he hurt him with this experimental bullet and oh boy, fucking hell. Like it was, t it was a very tense episode. One of the other episodes that I liked was, I think it was episode three or four, uh, Luke, is trapped underneath the rubble of, rubble of the Chinese restaurant where he lives while stuck with his landlady and who's pretty much warmed up to him after he has saved her life saved uh, saved her from like some uh from uh some uh uh gut goons looking for protection money and uh 
And um, while they're trying to get out, we get we get his backstory. We get why he was in prison. We get how he met his wife. We get all of this, and it's actually it goes from being it goes from being a black exploitation in the streets. It goes from a, in a private PI kind of show to an episode of like fucking in the heat of the night. <laughs> That's what it is. It is awesome. It is so good. I, I goddamn love it. Uh, I, I, I love this episode because then we get to see, because we then get to see Luke Cage with a tiara, the tiara, the cuffs, and he's punching a wall. He's fucking punching a wall. And I goddamn love it. And of course, we get an Easter egg of him wearing his original outfit, and it just, and he looks at, looks at himself and like, you look like a damn fool. I'm thinking, yeah, but you look awesome. <laughs> But it is, it was indeed a, it was good though. It, it, I love that episode. Uh, one of the other things I love is the soundtrack. Soundtrack is awesome. I'm not the biggest hip hop artist fan or rap fan, but I love Wu-Tang Clan. And they do play Wu-Tang during a hallway fight, which awesome, fucking great, like, you, because he's just listening to Wu-Tang while he's being the fuck out of guys. And yeah, it's that, it's, it is that good. Now, the biggest negative is indeed pacing. Like Jessica Jones, this could have been shortened to eight episodes. This really could have been one of those shows that could have been shortened, but it does stretch out to meet that 13 episode quota and it really didn't need to. Uh, um, but for the most part, it's not as bad as people, some people say it is. It's not nearly as un, uh, jarringly poorly paced as, uh, as I felt like Jessica Jones was or Daredevil season two was, but it does have pacing issues. Um, if I, I wish I could remember all of it, but I can't, <laughs> but for the most part, it's a good show. I enjoy the show. I it, I really do. I thought Luke Cage was a lot of fun, and Luke Cage is my favorite show right now in terms of the Marvel Netflix series because it really oozes what black exploitation was. And like I said before, it's a show a lot of people need now. This is a show that works that I mean, this uh, this was a show that was that is sorely needed in in these times, in these very trying times, especially when you have, especially when it's when it came out two months after the Cheeto got elected. But I digress on that. Anyway, I got five minutes before Defenders comes on, and I wanted to do another video before uh, I did Iron Fist. Uh, so, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch an episode of Fenders, get this up online, and then shoot a reaction video. But before I do any of that, let's go ahead and do a final score. The final score for Luke Cage is a 9 out of 10. I love it that much. Is it better than, is it actually better than Daredevil? No. But I, but I think I had more enjoyment and fun out of Luke Cage than I did out of Daredevil. And I love Daredevil season one. I think Daredevil season one is fucking perfect. But Luke Cage was just too fun. It was one of those that knew what it wanted to be. It took itself seriously when it needed to and it had fun with it at the same time. And it, that's what it really needed was a, somewhat of a shot in the arm of some fun with these shows because we had some very because before that we had uh, we had Daredevil and Jessica Jones which were meant to not be taken as seriously but it didn't like have cartoony characters just pop out of nowhere like Jessica Jones did it knew when to be cartoony and when it didn't need to so anyway that's it for me so I'll be back uh, after my reaction video and with uh, my review for Iron Fist. 
Uh, I'll see you guys next time. You guys have a wonderful night. Bye.